I was well behaved with Dave Schrader. Chris, he gets me all fired up, but that blames me. See that? Okay. I, I feel okay. the pain. We are live. Let's we'll just wait for people to come on. If you feel like you've entered mid-conversation, you, you are have. correct. Because... And we're not going back. <laughs> <laughs> we have talked about a lot of different things and that we're not going to talk about you put your phone uh, anymore. Silent, though. So, okay, people are here. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, what is it, Tuesday? Tuesday night, as promised. I can hear myself coming through there. Is that distracting to you, John? No, it sounds good to me. Uh, uh, good evening, Carrie, Cynthia, Laura, Kay. How is everyone? Susan, how are you? All right. For those of you who don't know who we are, uh, I'm John. This is Chris. We are a part of New Jersey Paranormal. Joining us tonight is the legend, Mr. John Zaffis. The Godfather. You all should know who he is. If you don't, you don't belong watching the show. Go move on to uh, <laughs> go watch something no, else. You definitely need to stay and watch if you don't know who this is, because you should know this person if you're in the paranormal. So... Mr. Zaffis, how are you, sir? How you been? I'm doing good. Keeping busy, been out running around and getting out there and starting to do things. And so it feels good. Feels I like good. the shirt, by the way. Is that a new shirt you're wearing? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was just telling John Chris earlier, everybody keeps picking on me because they go, you wear the same, the same freaking shirts all the time. I got the green, the blue, and the black and white collards. That's what, and I got five of each. Wow. So, no, it's not a crazy. continuous no wash shirt that I wear. But. <laughs> I, I told him I'm looking at pictures of an event that he just did uh, at some theater, and I'm looking at this shirt, and I'm like, there's that shirt again. I'm like, he, he really did. Did you ever think that he's very, very shirt. proactive with, with the earth and everything, and he's being very eco friendly? <laughs> no, I just think he likes those shirts. I can't explain it. It's paranormal in itself. Anyway. <laughs> We're going to get into a few things, John, because... Um, hey, well, if you think about it, wait a minute. Those shirts are very haunted. They've been in a lot of haunted locations. Uh, uh, please. I'm, a lot I'm, of attachments. I'm sure when you finally got... I hope it's 100 years from now, those shirts are going to be hanging somewhere. Oh, they're going to be auctioned now. <laughs> you know it. Uh, Satori's on. Hey, Satori. Satori, how are you? Satori Hawes. You know this guy, don't you? You got to get rid of this. Yeah, guy. I am. Oh, yeah. All right. Satori, Jason's daughter. Satori hey. Hawes. Hey, Hawes, kid. We're going to be with her Saturday at the mine, Sterling Hill Mine. Cool. She's doing an event with us. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool. So um, a lot of stuff has been going on here and there, that I, and, and we've been talking about different things. And I'm always interested in getting your opinion. Here, here's what happens between me and, and Mr. Zaffis here. Something comes up, and it, it could be paranormal related or related to someone in the paranormal and what do I do? I message John and I go, hey, John, da, 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 da. can I talk to you about this? And eight times out of 10, he ignores me. But there is the, the two times where. <laughs> That's the world. I ignore the world. Okay. But there is the two times where I'll get a call back and, and <laughs> he, he he talks me through it. Again, my, my mindset sometimes, I have tunnel vision. But I always check with him, especially with certain things involving cases uh, and people within the paranormal. I check with him first to see if I'm kind of in the right road there. And then we kind of And to talk him off, And to talk you off ledges. Yes, he always talked me off a few ledges too, by the way. I almost committed suicide, John. I don't know <laughs> if you know that. We were talking about that before too, but that's a joke. A oh, joke. all right. I'm sitting here going, what? <laughs> no, remember we were, okay. For, I'm not going to go back. Uh, anyway, I got a few things that I, I want your opinion on as far as questions about the paranormal. I, somebody that we both I plead know. the fifth. Somebody Judge that, Chris, I plead the fifth. <laughs> you want to go change your shirt? Is this uncomfortable for you? <laughs> somebody that we both know. I won't mention any names, okay? They posted um, an article, uh, a small paragraph. I don't know if it was written by Hans Holzer or his daughter, and they were talking about modern-day ghost hunters uh, using equipment. And, you know, that back in the day when Hans was out there 
doing and, and you guys were doing and Ed Lorraine were doing that they use, you know, a medium and a real to real recorder and, and that, you know, spirits from the 1880s might be afraid of the gadgets and think that it's something that's going to blow up. And they might not approach them. And then a guy right underneath this person's comment said, well, you know, if you think about it, we're, we wear modern clothes. We, we maybe talk a little different. You have people that claim to speak to the dead that maybe a spirit from that time frame would think it was witchcraft or they may not want to approach someone who looks completely different either. So there's two sides of that. And I know you're a guy who doesn't mind working with the equipment. Like, where do you sit in the middle of all this? Uh, that was probably Alexandra that posted that. That sounds like something, you know, uh, I'm, I'm friends with her. I've known her, okay. you know, for quite a while. Um, and again, too, uh, with it, I always, um, me, I'm very old world. And most people know that. Um, again, too, with, with the investigating, because I think the important aspect of it is trying to figure out what you're exactly dealing with, how you're dealing with it. But on the flip side of it, John, I'm 100% behind all the equipment for the simple fact we're tr everybody's trying so hard to prove everything out. And they're trying to do it scientifically. So again, I back that. But um, you know, to the time comes or the period or whatever where we can get repeatability because that's what you need in the scientific community. They want repeatability so it can be charted and, you know, therefore is something that's very important. Uh, a lot of the researchers, you know, are gathering a tremendous amount of uh, evidence, recording it, getting all that data, and hopefully someday we can, uh, you know, prove it out. I'm extremely intrigued with a lot of the equipment. I wouldn't know how to turn half of it on, but, you know, I'm interested. I, you know, I'm very inquisitive with all of it. A lot of the, my team members, you know, horns, bells, and whistles. Most of the, right. the groups are like that, but that's okay. And on the flip end of it, I have people that, you know, they're more interested in what they're picking up, what the environment's all about, what's right. some of the history and different things like that. So a lot of times it's a good combination, you know, to get involved with, uh, get a good comprehension of uh, a lot of it with the paranormal. Well, well let me ask you a question, follow that up a little bit. You get a call for a case, right? Yeah. The team that you go in with, is there a sensitive or medium within the group? Actually, uh, one, two, three, it's three or four of them that are, wow. uh, okay. that are uh, sensitive that, um, you know, again, too, if they're giving me information or, you know, saying, Johnny, you know, we're getting this, we're getting that, you know, I listen, you know, again, because I, I'm a very firm believer in that, that, you know, people do pick up on things. It right. doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be tied in with what's going on on the case. No, they excuse me, they could, could be getting information from something else or somebody that's with us. So you, you have to take all that into consideration when you're looking at this and, and, and trying to comprehend and understand a lot of it. Yeah. I just keep, I keep an open mind with a lot of stuff. I just do. And yeah, at the end, you know, when uh, things are uh, being pulled together and we're trying to comprehend and understand things is where I take a lot of stuff into uh, consideration. Before we go too far, yeah. um, there's a gentleman that has been sending us messages for a long time asking to be brought on to say hi to you. If you could say hi to this gentleman, his name is, and I hope I get it right, Dana Jardinia. Hey, Dana Jardinia. Glad you're watching. Thanks for always asking. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's uh, you know, always good to have people, you know, still interested in you and again this guy's you know, a diehard yeah, he's he a sends, a, he sends us sorry a message all the time in. but i wanted that to, to at least give him that yeah, sorry we couldn't bring you on but um back to uh, i i watched the ghost adventures i don't know what you think of those guys i know you probably met all those guys you met everybody every one of them yep they're doing um i'm not going to ask you to comment on the show but just the the sort of the premise uh, they're doing a show called House Calls, where they're actually helping people in their homes that are experiencing things. And this last show they did, they kind of 
were all about the, a demon being in the house. And it was because, you know, the, the man, the, the, I don't know if he was the husband, you know, said yes. he felt like, you know, something was kind of making him or wanting him to go into the basement. You know, they were seeing things in the house. I mean, what is the process for someone like you? Because you are a demonologist. I mean, you don't go and you don't have a T-shirt on that says it. But uh, what is the process for you to even consider that something may be, quote unquote, demonic? It, it depends on who I'm dealing with. If I'm dealing with one of my spiritual friends, a priest, a minister, or, you know, anybody spiritual, they call me and they go, hey, John, you know, I think there's an issue here. Can you help me out? I'm going to look at that differently than I will from somebody calling me up and telling me they're possessed or I'm getting an email that they're possessed. Again, I have to evaluate things a little bit differently moving into situations. Right. Because, again, it, it's just a popular thing today that, you know, everybody's got, you know, Satan coming up through the floorboards. I, you know, again. Um, but if, but it, if it's a family that calls you and believes that they have something demonic in their home, how do you how do you even validate or can you know what? Yeah, I mean? Well, that, that's where it's important to, you know, my thing is more so than you telling me anything is, uh, you know, going on site right. to evaluate things. But John, on the flip side, after doing this for so many years, I could tell if somebody is telling me a story Bingo. and they're making things up, Bingo. you know, you, you can tell you just, after a while, you know, you, right. it's just, you know, the nature of it. Right. So again, it, it's hit or miss. It's always going to be. You know, that's never changed. You know, I've gone into cases where, you know, I'm like, okay, we're probably dealing with Casper the ghost and found out, you know, no, we are dealing with something evil yeah. or going in super guarded thinking we're dealing with, you know, somebody opened up the gates of hell and there's <laughs> nothing to it. Right. So it, 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 a lot of it is, you know, your hands on research with these things. Right. And uh, digging into it and talking to people, talking to people that are affiliated with it or have experienced something. So th there, there's a lot that goes into it. And I'm going to, I've always said this and I've never changed on it. Demonic cases are far and few in right. between. I agree. So I how, agree. Do you, how do you feel about people just, just, just watching these shows and wanting to be a part of the paranormal field? start doing investigations. And again, I think the bothersome thing for me is that when children are involved also is that they start doing EVP sessions and doing, and, and cannot that create your problems? Well, we were talking about that too. We, we were talking about the concept of people quote unquote, investigating their own home. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe not with a Ouija board, maybe with a Ouija board, but doing EVPs in their home doing, I mean, in theory, could they not, channel something in or kind of aggravate something that may have been dormant i mean is it again uh today with a lot of people you know due to the tv shows and everything they don't think twice about setting up you know uh a recorder or something to see if they could capture something yep. so but again too um it it's the nature of it in I think I take a look at it more as, you know, adjusting because again, look at how many people have cameras all over the inside the house, you know, security systems. They're capturing some phenomenal stuff yeah. out there. Yeah. They really are. So again, you know, it, it, when I look at it, it is, it, it's not like it was, you know, before we would say, okay, don't necessarily do something or, but when somebody naturally is catching stuff, and then they're like, whoa, look what we caught. You know, yeah. and it's like, okay, we've heard noises and blah, 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 blah. Here again, you got to take that step back, look at everything and try to evaluate it and try to figure out exactly what is happening. Yeah, so, I, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's the simple fact of it too. You know, you got a location and people are screaming it's haunted. It might not have been haunted. Right. You get people coming in and out of there. The law of attraction, the law of recognition. Thus, you're opening up the doors and you're going to bring spirit in. There you go. So, again, it, it's the nature of it on looking at it from uh, a lot of different perspectives. So, 
I, I try to I try to keep a neutral ground because it's just gotten to that point now where when trying to evaluate things or look at things, it, it's you know more of um, again it, it, it is what it is and it, it, it's it's only going to get worse. Oh, I know. See, <laughs> see, the reason I said that was because um, I met a guy who had bought a, a, a quote unquote haunted object that didn't have a, a negative attachment to it. And this person was showing me videos of all the quote unquote investigations that they were doing in their homes. And they were saying that, you know, since that, you know, they were hearing things, they were seeing more things and they were kind of like, you know, doors or whatever or cabinets. And I said to him, you're, you're kind of playing with fire there. And he's like, well, what do you mean? The thing that I bought, it doesn't have a negative attachment. I said, you're opening up a channel, dude, you know, and you keep opening up that channel and you keep putting it out there to the unknown. Hey, I want to talk to who's ever listening. It's like a hey, who's ever here around me? Hey, come in and talk to me. You don't know how and why and yeah. who's listening. See, I don't have a problem with people doing that, but what I have, what I, what I wish people would take into consideration when you you have young children, oh. you, you, you sometimes you might. There's just like you don't want to playing out in the street. Yeah, but it's still the same to, with with older people as well. You could still attract something that. that you can't handle. But when children don't have control, at our homes. This is how I feel. This is my personal opinion. Homes are supposed to be sanctuaries, a safety. So why would you do anything to not? Have it safe. Does that make sense? You mean like have a whole museum worth of paranormal oh objects God. attached to your home? No, I'm not going to do that either. <laughs> All right. What do we read that question and tell me if it's a viable one? It says question from <laughs> Litsa. I'm starting to notice when I'm watching a paranormal show and I sensed it is only an angry ghost, but the people said it's demonic, yet I hear angry ghost only. Uh, when the paranormal investigation ends, their investigation is indeed just a ghost angry for they have place violating or because they were challenged. I don't know that. And then, and then it just went right up and I missed it. Okay. Um, here's one. Uh, I have a question. If you have an object that you think is haunted, if you get rid of that object, will the haunting stop? I don't know. Okay. They can't, I can't answer something like that. Because, again, it's important to talk to the individual. You know, is there activity in the home? Is yep. there something to do with the land? Is it the item? Is it the person? There, there's so many things that you have to take into consideration. Because what I like, the one thing that uh, is always interesting and intriguing is the fact that somebody, oh, I bought this wicked occult item. They killed 10, 10 people with it. <laughs> I brought it home. Now I got activity. You think? Yeah. I mean, again, it, it, it's just the, the way people view things and the way they look at things today. We it, It's so different. Everything's yeah. so different today from, you know, just even five, six years ago, yeah, the way... Yeah. People interpret things the way they look at things. and Well, a lot of people I, want it. You know what I mean? They want it until they got it. And then once they got it, they don't know what to do with it. But everybody's watching these shows. Everybody has an interest in the movies. And Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. and everybody they, wants to they say wanna that do they it. have a They don't want to do it. I mean, this is yeah. a good question. The, Laura wants to know, can, you just, can John Zaffis describe a place he went to that, was, that really had demonic things happening? And what the difference is between a demonic haunting versus a regular haunting? What well, it's a that's uh, again. It takes your time. It takes research uh, to dig in to find out exactly what is uh, happening to, to be able to determine something like that. There's no clear cut answers to some of the uh, different things that you know we deal with. I mean. Okay, a good example is years ago when a person got scratched or pushed or shoved, we all thought it was a demon. We didn't know any better. But again, you know, as you advance and you're involved and you understand uh, different things, I mean, you know, if somebody was a mean, rotten, drunk, abusive person in life, they're going to be like that as a spirit. Yeah. So thus, I, you know, evaluate and look at things and try to take everything into consideration when determining stuff, I mean, yeah. when when you go into a home that is legitimately uh, filled with, you know, it, it, 
per se negativity or something demonic, you know. Right. You, you know, I, you don't need Whoopi Goldberg to come in there with you. You know, you have to ask. It's not demonic. <laughs> exactly. So again, ninety percent of the time, with with a true, you know, situation that's on a negative level, these people are usually legitimately scared. They don't want a whole bunch of people coming in and out. They're fearful for their kids. They're fearful for a lot of different things. Something like that. I'm going to look at a little bit. You know, where I'll go, okay, th there's something to this. Yeah, but the demonic stuff, again, I'm just basing this on things that I've seen and things that I've read. And I've never dealt with anybody who, who I thought had an actual demon in their home, although I've dealt with some who were told they did and it turned out to be malarkey. But those type of cases, and I'm sure Ed and Lorraine may have worked on one or two or more, is it about more the individual being affected that it is kind of the home environment Envi environmental yes okay if you're talking uh when, when it goes down the road of uh demonology right and we're we're talking a situation of whether it's the land or the house right. or the individual right you I, even today again i would more so look at the situation and a lot of times when evaluating or trying to comprehend what's happening, you will find out it's the person themselves. Right. It's not necessarily the environment. So, again, that has to be looked at and just take into consideration. You know, again, it's, it, it's hard to evaluate a lot of times, one, two, three. You know, because I laugh at that because all of us hear the same thing. Ah, come over to my house. Get it out of my house right now. I don't want it here. Yeah. It doesn't I don't happen know like it, that. How it happened. I said, you can't just, you know, uh -uh. and I don't have 911 dial the exorcist on speed dial. I just don't have that. <laughs> what? You, you, know, you mean you just, you mean you can't get rid of it just by saging? See, that's what gets me too. I can I mean, scare away humans more than I could scare away a demon probably, but. <laughs> I, 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 I've I used sage and I, I've used it a bunch of times and I see, you know, other people on the shows doing it. But again, um, you know, it really is, you know, I, I've, again, I, I've seen it, I've used it. I've had good results with it. Sometimes other times it was like a band aid and things got better and then they, they didn't remain better. But I, I don't know again in my head how, you know, like you said, an instant fix, you're in the house, they're dealing with all this stuff all the time, and you're walking around, you sage, open the door or the windows, and the spirits are gone. It, it's way more than that. You're, you're dealing with, like you said, the, the family dynamic, the people that are living there. You know, you really, you can't just, you well, There's know, a lot, there's a lot. Take care of it in an hour, like they show on TV, like an hour episode. Mm. There's a lot yeah, more. Yeah, but I know, but that's, you know, again, eh. That's why I, I think I came to terms with, you know, probably so much, you know, between, you know, watching TV shows or the movies or anything. It's Hollywood, you know, again, and it, it, unless you're in the background and you understand how the, because I call it the machine, how the machine operates, how the machine works, you can't compare that to what we do right. with investigations. I mean, we see people posting it. We hear people talking about it. You can't, you know, take, um, it, a reality TV show that's out there that does, you know, paranormal shows or anything like that and really compare it to, you know, what an investigation is in detail and to the right. depth and what else goes on. Again, you know, that's what I say to people, you know, they say, how can you stay so calm with so much of this? Because I've been around, you know, the knocking and the shredding and the tearing apart you know, my entire career, I watched what Ed and Lorraine went through. Yep. There wasn't anything those people didn't get that wasn't controversial. Right. You know, any case that they got involved with, you know, it ended up being controversial behind, yeah. the, you know, and, and, you know, that's the nature of it. But again, you know, they took that chance. They went public on stuff. And again, 90% of the people out there today wouldn't be doing what they were doing if my aunt and uncle didn't do what they did. They broke down the barriers. And that's 100%. You and I were talking about this on the phone the other day, and I don't want to rehash that conversation, but you're right. I mean, when you're the kind of pioneer 
of something. And they were going out there with the intent of helping people when there was no one else out there, really. There was some, but, you know, Ed and Lorraine were out there to help people. I mean, they were really trying. These people had issues. It's not like today where you could, there's a hundred paranormal teams at any given state. Back then, it was, who's going to help you if you're dealing with a real issue in your home and people think you're nuts and your neighbors think you're nuts and the cops think you're nuts. You know, it's like, like you said, they were the pioneers. Well, your own and, family would of, think but of course nuts. people are going to question. They still do question everything that, that we do. And, and okay, but not as much. Not, not, no, not, not as much. much because it's more no. mainstream. You know, the, more the, the, bar the barriers have been broken. And again, too, you know, Ed and Lorraine, Hans Holzer, I mean, uh, uh, Barry Taff, a lot of these, you know, the old timers, when they would do things and put things out there, they, you know, they basically had laid the foundation for a lot of things. So, again, I, you know, I take a lot of it in strive and I look at it. And again, like I said, I'm used to it. It's something that, you know, it, you know. I don't let it affect me right. to that point because I know what I do. I know how I do it. I know I've worked on hundreds of cases with Ed and Lorraine that never went public. Right. Nothing ever, you know, they went in, helped the people, did what they had to do. I've been with them when they've been with clergy friends of theirs or spiritual friends of theirs. Those cases have never gone public. Right. So, you know, I, I have to look at that, you know, very openly, just like a lot of the other old time researchers. I know there's cases that they've done that never went public right. or, or came out to the forefront. So, you know, with that, you know, it, you, when people decide to go public and I am witness to this. I am witness to the simple fact of watching Ed and Lorraine say to the family, you go public, you're going to have problems, you're going to have issues, you're going to have this happen, and blah, 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 blah. And again, I, I it, it's the nature of it. And it's just like anything else out there, you know, once that occurs, once that happens, you, you can't turn back from it. And sometimes it gets very difficult on people. It causes a lot of issues, it causes a lot of, you know, things uh, to occur. But again, it it's the nature of it. It, it really is. Because even to this day, I, you know, I'll still have people, you know, go at me or, you know, <coughs> say different things. And it's like, it is what it is. I know right. what I know. I understand right. what I know and understand what I do. So therefore, you know, it, it is what it is. Right. So, but there, so, there's a lot of, um, and, and again, it's, I understand people like getting involved with the paranormal. People want to witness things. They want to see things. And it makes it very difficult when any of us deal with residential hauntings. You better believe it. And it, it, I deal with it just like everybody else. Like trying to peel back an onion. And, and again, well, you, you and know, I talked about this was a good thing that you brought up because it's a good point, not just for someone of your stature, but even for, you know, ordinary groups like ours. Some people, because they watch the shows and they are quote unquote into it, they'll call a paranormal team in just for kind of entertainment. Like, Hey, I caught an orb in my bedroom on my iPhone and yeah. let's have an, let's have a paranormal team in. And, it, you know, well, they, they have their family there and their friend, whatever. And they're looking just to, again, be involved and see what a real group or, and, and you were saying that, that other, you know, people will contact you that have had 10 groups in there. Mm -hmm. And they'll want you to come in there and you know that, you know, hey, you've had 10 other groups. You know, why are you calling me in now again? You know, and they don't want any kind of resolution. They just want to see how John Zaffis is going to show up and do his, you know, thing and, you know, their home. That's really, mm -hmm. and it's weird that it's come to that, but this is well, the. It's not, it's, not, it's not anymore, John. That's it. No. That, that's the whole thing. It's not weird anymore. It, it, it's an accepted, uh, uh, it's accepted a lot more than what people even 
could probably fathom, you know, the, the entertainment value, but right, exactly. by having all the people come exactly. in, you know, and the, the hopes and, you know, they uh, they might end up uh, on somebody's TV show. Oh, yeah. So again, it's just a, di- it's a different, in- different environment now. Right. So right. I, to me, no, it's not weird at all. Somebody so people, asked a really like, good People question. are asking, let me ask real quick before you ask him. People are asking about the TV stuff. They're asking about whether Haunted Collector's coming back or if you're working on any TV projects. There's been three or four of those. So <laughs> I'll let you uh, address that. I don't know why anybody wants to see my old gray butt. But, uh, but uh, again, no, nobody butt? said they want that show. <laughs> I for one can raise my head for no. I'm not. I'm not, do- I'm not doing naked paranormal. I'm not doing it. I have a co-star for you. We talked about it. <laughs> Don't you start. With me. Anyhow, um, again, would haunted collector come back? I doubt that very much. Um, I don't say no to anything. <laughs> That's not true. I well, wait. You not want to finish? <laughs> you because know, you 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 tell me to sign up on every freaking thing. But anyhow, <laughs> he just wants you on TV. Exactly. So I, he wants to okay. see except it. for except for the naked old gray butt thing. That we can definitely agree. <laughs> No, I'll never say no that I will not ever do something again in the future. You know, again, I don't rule it out, but it would have to be something I'm comfortable with and something that I, you know, I want to get involved with. And again, it's difficult. It's hard um, with a lot, uh, a lot of different ways uh, looking at a lot of it. So I never say no. Well, here's I, the thing. And that, I always tell you, people, I, you know, I'm not as bad as I was before I was to the point when somebody would call me up with the pitches and everything. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm banging the phone up. I didn't want to hear it, but you know, I do listen there. There are a few things in the background that, you know, uh, one of the projects goes back pre COVID that ended up going on the back burner. But ag- again, it's just, We'll see what the future holds. It's about the that's best what I respect today. about you because you and I have talked uh, about projects that have been offered to you. And, you know, you really are, you know, in the past, you may have considered a few, like, let's go back 20 years ago, whatever, to, to get on TV. But now you really, you want to make sure, like you said, you, you're this is a project you want to do and you're comfortable with and that represents you the way you want to be represented. Otherwise, you won't do it. Right. Yeah. I well, respect that. Again, again, again it, 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 it's the, just the, the, the comprehension and understanding of everything of it. You know, um, it, it's a difficult uh, perspective. It, it's a, a hard thing. But like I said here again, there, there isn't too many TV shows. I haven't you know, been asked to go on or anything. Mm -hmm. Not that I, you know, again, I'm against all of them or anything because I know most of them, but, you know, um, I just know what I would like to see done. I know what I'd like to see out there and, you know, hopefully someday that could happen. Well, somebody asked a really good question. Can you do too much research and it affects your perspective? Yes. Okay. When you start dealing um, and you start checking in, you're de- dealing with a 200 year old house plus the land. Then you start researching, uh, into the family and start digging into a lot of things. You can uncover a heck of a lot. So, um, sometimes it can affect, you know, a, a situation. So again, I think an important element is, you know, uh, trying to evaluate what you're dealing with right at the moment. And then as you're getting into it, okay, okay, we have issues here. There's something going on. Let's dig in, start doing our history research or things like that and just see what could possibly be happening. Yeah, I I agree with that too. Even Jason Hawes said he doesn't want to know too much. And I I think like, like you said, and like the person asked, sometimes it does you know, you get that tunnel vision when you have all this information and you're fixated on asking the right that questions. information. Yeah, mm-hmm. you may not really be able to communicate or get in touch with whoever is there because you're so fixated on Tom Smith who lived there with his three kids and that's it. You know, you just, you know. 
There's, um, a, there's a lot that goes into, you know, the understanding and the comprehension of it because it does, it does aggravate me to death when I get a telephone call from somebody and they went, I had this paranormal group in here and they told me the demons are coming up through the floorboards. <laughs> they're there for two or three hours and they're already saying Satan's there with them. Could you imagine? So yeah, that makes it difficult because then again, once that seed is planted, you know, for the fact that they have something evil, demonic in their house, these people are going to believe that. So, I got a question along those lines too, though, because we've had exact issue you're talking about, but here's the thing. We do work with mediums. If, if, you know, as part of the investigative process, uh, but you know, you met Jane Doherty, you know, the mediums that, that we work with, um, what do you do or have you done in the past when the sole reason or information that these people have that say to, to think that they have a demon is based on a medium? There is no actual proof of that or evidence of that, yet a medium came in and told them that. You know what no, I mean? I deal with that all the time. That's what I'm saying. You're way behind the eight ball if they believe that person because now you've got to kind of unring that bell and that's and make a them hard start thing at to zero do again. because we knew a case where a, a, a <laughs> demonologist went in and basically said you're not dealing with a demon you're dealing with psychological issues I within know. the family and they were just like no you don't know what you're talking yeah. about the psychic medium uh, said okay the you just answered it right there when somebody says that to me that no you don't understand you don't know what you're talking about i'm done yeah. yep you're I'm not done. gonna win that yeah. Again, you know, as all as we could do is what we do and what we care about going in, trying to help somebody. And like the old saying goes, you can't, you can, you know, walk the horse up to water, but you can't make them drink it. And that's exactly so it. Therefore, when people tell me, but I have to help them, I have to help them. You can't fix people. No. You, that, that's not what it's about. We're not here to fix people. We're here to help people, give them information. Try and help them move on, whether they choose to live with the, the demon in the house or the ghost in the house. Knock your socks off. That's your business. <laughs> I got I, a know. call from a, a, a woman who was a grandmother, and her eight-year-old grandchild was doing a summoning circle. And I stopped her there, and I said, please explain to me how your <laughs> eight-year-old grandchild knows how to do a summoning circle. That makes no sense to me. Okay. That tells you right there. Again, uh, people turn and don't pay attention to what the environment is going on, what the child's involved with, what the child could possibly be doing. All the red flags will go up on these types of situations yep. and they choose to ignore it. Yep. Yep. So therefore, it creates the issue once the child gets involved with it. Now, yeah, th they're extremely young today that are getting involved with doing rituals and practicing different things. Crazy. Again, the internet, the exposure to everything. Yeah. It, Sitting down every an, week and watching the shows, and that's exactly what they all do. And that's and this and it's a family. It's it's a it's a bonding. Like we used to sit down on Sundays to watch. Walt Disney movies. <laughs> now families are sitting down and watching paranormal so, shows uh, together. So people are asking about your your kids, John, that were in Haunted, uh, on Haunted Collector with you. They want to know if they continued on in the paranormal, if they're doing anything still with oh, uh, the field. Well, actually, both of them went back to working normal jobs. Uh, my son, he has very little interest in you know, being involved with anything, you know, again, that's, uh, you know, that, that, that's not unusual. Amy, she gets involved a little bit, especially with, the, she still has that interest with an item. She'll look at something or do something and she'll go, I wonder what's, you know, the history. And she'll start telling me she looked it up or, you know, so she has folks around, but again, too, you know, uh, they went back to what I call quote unquote, what you want to ever call normal, normal lives working. Civilian. Yeah, you know, working nine to five, so they have their insurances and they could pay their bills and everything. So, I if something ever came up in the future, do I think that they might consider going on to a show? Maybe I don't know. I don't, Were don't you know. the one who was behind getting them on Haunted Collector, or was it their idea? Both. Okay. Both. I, I said, they, you know, we just talked, and 
I said, you guys interested in it? Uh, and at that uh, time frame, Chris, yeah. Chris, Chris was a little bit more interested back in the day with a lot of it in comparison to, you know, moving forward. And, you know, again, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was uh, one of the just, just that type of situation where everything just happened to pull together. Uh, somebody wants to know if you would ever consider going to Zach Baggins Haunted Museum in Vegas. Would I ever consider what? Going to Zach Baggins Haunted Museum in Vegas. Would I actually? I was going to go when I was out there this past December. Okay. I, I'd be curious to see it. I mean, again, you know, that uh, the man created uh, a museum out there along That's with smart. 500 others of us out there. Yeah. Um, again, it, it is what it is. Would I like to see it someday? Of course I would go. And I'd hope that Zach would be there. Because, I, I mean, I know him. I don't talk to him or go back and forth, right. you know. But, um, again, you know, to see it, it, it would be interesting. That would be cool. Well, you're still looking for a place, right, for you? I'm or still, I just get ready to say to you, probably, I probably would get depressed because I'd walk out and go, oh, <laughs> man, look at what he freaking felt here. <laughs> so Dana wants to know if you would, and if you've ever been here, this uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, this Victoria Cafe. Does that ring a bell to you? Doesn't sound familiar. Yeah. So I don't think he knows what that is. No, I, I'll tell you when, again, the, one of the highlights for me uh, in a long time was uh, for my last birthday, uh, Chris arranged it with John for us to come up to his home, uh, met his wife, Cheryl, who's really funny. Um, we had dinner with them and I got to go into the Fortress of Solitude at the, you know, John's uh, museum there. And I got to look around and I know even people that when we were talking about interviewing this time, they were saying, do you think you'd ever go there and do some kind of live interview with him in the museum? And I said, of course I could ask him that, but I was just thrilled and they're like, well, what was in there? I said, everything is in there. There's what no <laughs> way I could tell you no. because there's there's smalls, there's mediums, there's large, there's it's everywhere. And I'm sure I didn't see it all, I'm sure. But my God, it was like, again, would I love to see that in a museum somewhere? Sure, I would. But I was very fortunate to go there and actually see a lot of it. And a lot of people are saying, when can we see his his uh, museum. They're all dying to see your museum. John's going to let me come in there. We're going to do a, a live interview <laughs> from his office, from the, the Fortress of Solitude, his sanctuary, and we'll go We'll go look around at the objects. I'm, pl I'm, ple I'm pleading the fifth. I'm pleading the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you he was going to move after I knew, after I found out where he lived. I told you it was a matter of time. <laughs> but I did. I appreciated that. Um, another thing that we were kind of talking about too. Uh, somebody asked a question too about angels. Do you believe in angels? They want oh, to know I if you've it, had an experience I, with I, an angel. Yes, I believe very strongly in angels or the angelic. Um, no, there's no doubt. See, the one thing with the comprehension with angels or the comprehension, the way people view them and look at them, they don't have a halo and they don't have these big fluffy wings. Usually an angel is a very bright, bright, powerful thing. And they're usually huge. They're large. And, uh, and they're, it's blinding when, when you have the, that type of a supernatural experience with angels or the angelic. I've had several occasions uh, throughout my life where that's happened. And Just again, random experiences or was no, something usually going tied on? in with something and okay. it's usually with cases or something I was involved with where uh, intervention would come in. Oh, wow. So uh, it, it's a it's a very powerful thing, uh, a very strong element. I have no qualms with calling upon guardian angels and the hierarchy to come in and help you know, uh, with protection and things of, uh, that nature. So again, you know, I believe very, very strongly. It's like that. a pure, uh, if you were to describe it to people and I, and I've experienced it when I was younger, um, it's like a purity of light, an absence of color and everything you could possibly imagine. And it's like you said, it's bigger than anything you can. And there's such a feeling that comes with it that you can't explain. She's it's describing the day she met me, John. I'm, I'm touched, by the way. I'm 
right here. I think, <laughs> I think that was a little gray. I don't think that was pure white. Okay. <laughs> so so um, again, you know, with that, you know, Chris, you just hit on something that's a good explanation for that. There's there's a calmness, a sereneness that comes over you when this occurs because the experiences that I've had were so quick and so fast when they occurred. I mean, just this one uh, situation, we're working on this real crazy place and um, it was a little old place. It was down in Philadelphia. All kinds of stuff was happening. People were getting scratched. Bit, and all of a sudden we had this bright light that just came over uh, the entire building through the windows underneath the doors and it just blinded us and boom, all the paranormal activity totally stopped. So again, you know, after that took that step back and I went, that was divine intervention and the angelic that came in because then we found out later on, you know, that the, there was a lot more with this place that they had some done really dark, dark rituals and oh practices that we weren't aware of. So again, a lot of it started adding up afterwards, why that transpired and it ended up happening. But you were raised religious, right? I mean, were, did you go to, a lot, to church a lot when you were a kid? Did I go? Well, I went to Catholic school. Oh, I did mean, you? Okay. Yeah. Until uh, high school. Um, you know, again, I, I am a, a a religious person, right. but I'm very analytical. I'm very right. open. Um, again, it, it's when it comes into a lot of people's belief systems and practices, I always keep that guarded. I keep that close to me because that's me. That That's how I, because people say this all the time to me. They go, you're religious? And I go, yeah, <laughs> but because of the way I am, the way I uh, react and the way I deal with things, because Again, it's, it's just the nature of me, the way I handle things. Somebody asked if any of your collection is from Ed and Lorraine's museum. Uh, from their museum, uh, per se, no. I have a ton of things from uh, my uncle that he had given me over the years, yeah. Okay. Because somebody was saying if they if they went to they went to visit your uh, an uncle and they they did tour the museum and then they slept with the lights on for a week after doing that. <laughs> I mean, it is intimidating, but, but you have to think again. Someone like him, someone like his aunt and uncle, they know about protection and binding type of rituals and and literally John's house is here and the items are next to it. A lot of them. So if anybody would know that they're still active, his wife would know and he would know. So, I mean, I went in there again with full confidence that I wasn't going to take anything home with me or have any lingering effects, you know, but yeah. That's because he has a process. Yeah, but it is intimidating to be around that many things that <laughs> people either believed had some kind of attachment or you yourself kept because you thought there was something there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So uh, this is really ghoulish and I'm sorry to ask it, but I think I did ask it when I was with you. God forbid something happens to you. Where would those objects go? Your house. <laughs> this is true. No, this is very, very they true. They would not. You heard them. I have it on no. tape. I have it on tape. A lawyer, I don't stand yeah. up and work. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the running, that's the running joke with my wife and the kids. They, they say that all the time. You better get that stuff taken care of. There's stuff out there that we don't even understand where it came from because you got, you keep everything up in your head. So that that's one of my main objectives or main things that I'd like to see done. I'd like to have the museum established to get everything squared away. So, you know, it can keep going, you know, after I'm gone, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see yes. that happen. Somebody asked this question of me and, and I had to think about it. And I always wonder what your opinion is. Are, are there places that you think or that you would not investigate because they're kind of taboo? I mean, I, and again, I don't mean to sound like a ghoul here, but let's say like 9-11, the site of 9-11, um, the Holocaust, you know, type of, would you ever consider if someone offered you to go fly out there to investigate, would, would you do it? Well, okay, the 9-11's uh, uh, an extremely good example of that. I have not investigated that. Okay. Um, we had stopped, uh, several of us, 
uh, on the way back from doing an investigation on Long Island and everybody wanted to stop. And I was like, okay. And we all got out of the car. We parked near the little church that remained standing. And I don't think I was ever interested in was taking a picture of the memorial of that cross that was in the background. And I did. And I had some dark energy that showed up in it. I I lost several friends in there. I lost someone I was working with in uh, 9-11. I knew cops, firemen that had. So again, it's just me per se. I have no interest in investigating that. I just right. don't. And you I know, feel again, the same way. Yeah, I, it, it's just, you know, they, there's places like that. I just don't have that big of an interest in it. Somebody else wants to go do it, That that's up but to them. But you know, in 200 years, it's going to be like the hot spot of hot spots. You know what I mean? But I, I think there are places where, I mean, you know, you've investigated places probably where murders have taken place. And I've been in a few of those places And we don't really think of those in the same way as we do these historical, tragic, you know, there there really are off limits as far as I'm concerned. I, I, you know, I wouldn't want to see anybody there with a a digital recorder, although I could see some of the family members would be open to it. But but who knows? But there are places that are. Yeah, there's just places that I just don't have an interest in going to or investigating. I just but but again, like I said, that's me. And it's just, again, there were a couple places that they were trying to line up for the show. And I told them I wouldn't do them. I just didn't didn't want to go. Do you ever remember like a a holy crap moment where things were being thrown around or like really it was intense and, and you were, you know, I don't know, maybe just starting out or whatever. Did you ever get one of those moments where even you were kind of intimidated by what was going on or because Ed and Lorraine were there, you never really. No, I, I think, um, no, I've had uh, several of my own personal cases that had nothing to do with them. Um, where there was intense activity, especially poltergeist cases right. where furniture getting moved around. One case I, I uh, had done where it was literally raining inside the house. Get out of here. Yeah, and I have a Winnie Winnie the Pooh downstairs from a poltergeist case I've that was moving all over the place. Yeah, you saw that. Um, th- there's a multitude of uh, different places where, you know, the activity takes place. Uh, I was in, uh, involved with a case with Debbie and Larry Elward where a woman literally levitated during the exorcism. And again, these are all, you know, cases that we did that had nothing to do uh, with them. So therefore, there's a lot of moments that that I take that step back and, you know, you just, you, you just, you know, even to this day, I still have different things that occur, different things that happen. And I take it, you know, where it's still an experience. Right. I mean, I got to tell you, again, if you really think logically of the power of the beyond, whatever you want to call it, the spirit world, in some cases where if you're someone like me, you know, without I'm not a sensitive one, and what they're capable of, it really is intimidating sometimes to know that maybe they could see you, but you can't see them and they have the power the ability to throw things and move things. And like you said, the, the attach to people. That's another question I was going to ask you. Have you ever felt like you had an attachment that you brought home and where you were physically affected after? Uh, probably quite a few times, I would say. Really? Um, again, I, I don't think twice of anybody, you know, uh, especially my spiritual friends of them doing blessings or, uh, you know, anything around or protective of me or the museum or anything else. Again, with, when you say attachments with things following, I call them hitchhikers. Right. I always have, always will. It, right. Does that occur? Does that happen? Yeah, it's probably going to continue to happen to the day I get out of this work. Right. So it, it's just, just, just the nature of it. So I don't look at it probably the way anybody else would look at it because right away I 99% of the time, if something's around and I know it's especially on a negative level, I have no qualms on having somebody do something, you know, uh, 
blessings or you know anything i i just yeah, don't you have to be you have to if you're going to be in this field you do have to expect to be affected by yeah. what you're doing i have been a, a number of times did you ever open up an object that someone has sent you and get like a really really bad bad feeling like oh my god this is exactly what they were describing and maybe i need to handle this one a little yes and i careful. learned my lesson i learned i learned my lesson with that very good years ago a dresser a three draw dresser came in from this very uh prominent doctor been in his family for several generations it came from the farm the, they sold the farm off they took the furniture out and everybody kept taking this dresser and putting it in their house and they were having all kinds of crazy paranormal activity so i was on the phone talking to him and i'm going well th you know this might be something attached to it <laughs> little did i know he sent it to me oh my god okay it's, and it, it was big and without thinking I dragged it into the garage out of the driveway, opened it up and everything, and tried to pull the dresser out, ended up cutting my hand, mm -hmm. ended up whacking my leg, cutting my leg, dropping it on my foot. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't take any precautions before I opened it up. And it dawned on me afterwards, I was like, that was the dumbest thing that, you know, I could have possibly have done. Here again, was it paranormal? I don't know, but awful coincidental. And it again, cut, dropping things. it on my foot. Then we pulled the drawers out. And then I'm looking underneath one of the drawers. And there was a whole bunch of different symbols underneath. I had taken a picture of it, sent it to him in an email. And he goes, John, we never even knew those were there. Oh anyway, it was pretty hardcore. So he goes, well, now I'm glad I sent it, you know, off to you. He goes, because I never even knew. And he said, and he asked his other siblings if they ever knew the markings were on the, underneath the bottom draw. And none of them were aware of it either. Wow. This is actually a good question. Have you ever worked a case where a spirit has jumped from person to person? Yeah, I've witnessed it. I've seen that um, uh, transpire. And it depends on how you want to look at it or how you want to interpret it. Um, I was at a Buddhist clearing slash exorcism. And usually one of the disciples will channel through the spirit. That's what they do. That's how they handle it. So one of them uh, was channeling the spirit through that was attached to a child and brought it into her. So you could kind of say that was almost like jumping from being around the child right into the channel or and was able to communicate and the Buddhist was able to get it to cross over. Isn't that crazy? Because Amy Allen told me a bunch of times and I looked at her like she had two heads, but uh, now that you're saying that it kind of makes sense. She told me a lot of times she'll take the spirit spirit home with her and then deal with it from a case. Yeah, but she's a psychic medium. That, I know, that, but I'm just yeah. saying, isn't that a bizarre concept to think that no. you can. No, for me, it's it part is. of her work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy to think that's a I don't topic. yeah. Again, when it when it comes in, I'm not, you know, trying to dismiss it, but yeah. when it comes into a person that does the channeling or opening up or whatever you want to call it, I'm working on things, the majority of the time they're gonna pick up on spirit and spirit's yeah. gonna go with them. Yeah. So that that's a very common thing. Very common. Yeah. I got a, a an object one time that you know, again, like you said, coincidence or not, I don't know. But literally from the time I came into the contact with this object, every aspect of my life went to crap. I was in a rotten mood. Negative things were happening and to me. People were nicely. coming after me, at, at me as far as, you know, whatever, family, otherwise. Um, her and I were at each other's throats. And he was I a nasty SOB. could not get rid of this feeling. It just was on me. And I... I was so desperate and I don't believe in Reiki or none of that stuff. And that's just me, but I was so desperate that I went to a medium friend of mine and I told her what happened. And she said, come to my house, I'll do Reiki on you. And I'm like, what could it hurt? You know, I went there hour and a half. She's telling me she's pulling things that are like leeches off of me. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and she's doing this over and over and over again. And when she was done, I, I get a lot of MRIs for my health issues when I got up off of the table, I felt lightheaded, like I was going to pass out. And she said, just sit there for a minute. And she brought mm -hmm. me a, a glass of water. I got up and again, placebo or not, I don't know. But I immediately felt lighter. Like that dark cloak that was over me, weighing me down, I just felt light. 
and I thanked her and I walked out of there going again. I don't know if that was placebo, if it was in my brain or did she really do something, but it worked. Everything changed after that. Well, then what are you analyzing? Well, you just said the same thing. Was it coincidence that the draw cut you and it fell on your knee? You analyze that situation. Yeah, but you're that no, you're talking a totally different situation. You're saying you're telling I'm me, the same you're thing. Telling don't me don't the same you don't believe in Reiki. You don't believe in you don't believe in any of our hogwash that we do, but you went and had the Reiki done, you felt lighter, you felt better, but you're still trying to justify it that it might have been psychological. I, I don't know. He you I know what know. he says about what I went through as a young person? She, he said that you had trauma. I'm going to go change my shirt. Hold on a minute. I'm gonna... Your trauma. What did you say? It was psychosomatic. He goes, I bet you none of, anybody else in your family didn't have the same experience. I get in with my family. I They start saying crap happened around her. It was scary. None of us wanted to share a room with her. We were all terrified. What's he say? That's because you're all hillbillies. You're all crazy. Things happen to hillbillies. They see UFOs. A lot of things happen to hillbillies. You're going to get yourself in trouble. <laughs> I'm not on TV, so I don't have to worry about this. Thing. <laughs> anyway, um, we were going to talk about objects and ask John to wait, show wait. a few of them. <laughs> I think he showed objects. Thank you. But I, I don't want to keep them forever, although I, I could talk to John forever. And he knows that. And, uh, you know, but um, like I said, we have these conversations and I run a lot of things by him. Um, I had a case where, and I'm not going to, go into detail, but it involved a very public and popular murder. And one of the objects that was used in part of this murder scenario was still in the home of the people that were renting it now. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why. And it was such a publicized case that I'd never been part of anything like that before. And I called him up and I said, do I get involved in this or not? Because the guy thought that the people who were murdered in the home were still there. And I was afraid that if I got involved and he went to the media, if he just wanted to get attention for himself and his home, that I would get thrown into this. And it could be possible that family members of the people who were murdered were still alive and in the area. So I called him and I said, what do I do here? Would you, would you even look into this? And we talked back and forth. But those are the type of things where, you know, I, I don't trust myself when it comes to everything. I haven't seen it all. I haven't done it all. So the people that I look towards right there, and Jane Doherty is another one who's been in this field a very long time. Yes. And we talk about this all the time. Who do you consult with as far as when you're working on something, if you're, you're in a case and I know you've seen it all, you've done it all, but do you ever go to certain people and say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. This is where I'm going. What do you think of this thing? You know? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Who are those people? Like, you don't have to give me names, but are they friends? Are they people in the field that you've known forever? Are they religious people? Usually sp- more, more so spiritual people than anything else. Um, again, that... Um, how I've handled most of it, the way I do most of it. And I do do that to this day. I don't have any qualms with picking up a phone and, you know, talking to uh, one of my spiritual friends or, you know, someone that uh, is in between with that. Or I have several very good uh, friends that are very gifted that aren't directly involved with the field that help me out with cases. Okay. So they, and they want nothing to do with the field. They don't want to get involved with it. So there's a lot of avenues that I look at, but I think, um, again, uh, and I've learned, I learned this many years back. If uh, you get involved with something, um, that's high profile or something that I think is, you know, going to put me in a situation I don't want to get involved with. I won't get involved with it. I just won't. I mean, there's situations out there. I'm sorry that you know, you just you have to use common sense. Right. And if you don't use your common sense, I think you're going to go in and, you know, uh, check something out and get involved with something. And there's not going to be any 
retaliation, if you will, they, you're looking at it from the wrong way. Because Here's a good question. And again, this relates to you completely, although I'm going to take your question and, and tweak, it. tweak it a little yeah. bit because uh, I think it does pertain to him. Why, when somebody sends you a haunted object or you get that object from wherever you are, and this is a question I'm sure a lot of people wonder, why don't you just destroy it instead of doing what you do, keeping it? Can you destroy a haunted object? The only thing I always recommend to person when you're dealing with a haunted item, don't burn it, don't break it. If you don't want to, you know, send it to one of us collectors, there's a bunch of us out there today, uh, you could bury it, you know, and do whatever your belief system's over or throw it into a, a body of water. The burning of an item can release if there's something attached to it and it could gravitate towards you. So if you have a spiritual person that knows what to do with that, you know, uh, an indigenous person, they believe very strongly in uh, burning those types of items, but they know what to do and how to handle it. Right. So again, just for the average person to do something like that, you know, you could be opening up and causing more problems. So uh, destroying a lot of the items isn't going to make it go away. Haunted items have been around for thousands of years. I mean, you know, predates everything, you know, as far as I'm concerned. But um, uh, again, you know, uh, keeping them and doing the bindings and the prayers is what I normally do over a lot of them. Sometimes there's a lot more that has to be done over them. Um, I, I really started collecting because my uncle's one that got me freaking going on it. Gave me a little, <laughs> little tiny statue, threw it in the back seat of the car, and he goes, you want that? And I go, what the hell am I going to do with that? But that made me go and pick up books and start reading right. about haunted right. objects, and that's how I got involved with it. Right. So. it makes a lot of sense, though. Again, the burying part, um, so you're saying if you buried it, whatever but your belief system is say a prayer just to kind of seal it, yeah. protect yourself and, and keep it where it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, that's interesting because I know a lot of people, they would be inclined to just throw it in the dumpster or, or to, like you said, smash it and think that. So your museum you know, is fireproof, right? So we don't have like ghostbusters where the spirits are like, all oh, like shooting out everywhere. <laughs> that anyway. would be an interesting concept. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. I appreciate you doing this. I, well, I love you to good, do this. Good to so be long. on. Yeah, and it's always great talking to you. It's always great just talking about everything and anything. And um, we'll see you in two months. Two months. Our unity. Looking forward to it. See, to see everybody Zappas live and in person at Power Unity, which is July twenty third. I'm almost positive he'll be wearing that shirt, or I could send you a picture of the one he'll be wearing. Uh, we could take bets on it. It will be life. a collar shirt. <laughs> John, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. All right, I'll, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs> All right. So, um, again, we, we could talk to him forever about a million different things and never cover everything because Not he possible. is just – I told you guys. I've said it a million times when we talk about the paranormal and we talk about TV shows and all that other stuff. And for me, that guy, top of the food chain, I've said it before. Uh, I'll say it forever. He is top of the food chain. He's yeah. open. He's honest. And I love the fact that he has moved with the times. He understands that there's any, it's open. It, uh, yeah, it's an evolution of things changing and documenting, and he's on board with all of this stuff, and that's really amazing. And and he and he looks at it from everybody's perspective, no. and that's unusual from today. Him and I talked the other day on the phone um, when we talked about something else, and I I mentioned the equipment to him, and he's like, I love it. I, I use the equipment because I'm open to new ideas and new theories and new methods of reaching and communicating with spirits and documenting the proof. So I love that he's like that. And and again, here's a guy who worked with Ed and Lorraine, has seen it all, done it all. And yet, like you said, he's still yeah. learning and still growing. So that's really what it's all about. Anyway, good to see you guys again. Thank you for joining us. Um, we'll be back again soon doing what I don't know, but we'll be here. Uh, 
Be Thanks safe, for watching. Be kind. Take care. Good night, everybody. Have a good night, everyone. See you soon.